Hello, my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, then welcome to my channel. And today's video is going to be my December 2022 reading wrap-up. The content warnings for all of the books I talk about today will be linked down below in the description. I have four books here and let's go ahead and get into it. The first book that I finished in the month of December is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This follows our main character who receives a letter telling her to come home to Gallant, but when she arrives, no one is expecting her. However, this is the first place that actually feels like home to her, so she refuses to leave and is determined to figure out all of the secrets that Gallant has to offer. This unfortunately did not end up being my favorite V.E. Schwab book, but it does have things that I do really like about it. I thought the setting and the world itself was really interesting, and I thought it had a lot of cool components to it, and I liked exploring that world and seeing things Things get revealed and come together. I thought that this had some really strong imagery and I also really liked the atmosphere. It felt kind of spooky and mysterious and just very fall-like. I probably would have preferred to read this in October instead of like the November, December, mostly December that I did read it in, but at this point it is what it is. I also really liked our main character here and there was a storyline in here that I did really get into and this was the thing that mostly kept me reading and excited to keep reading, but unfortunately I did have a lot of trouble getting into this book outside of everything that I just said, which has never happened to me before with this author. I, I'm glad that I read it, but I do think that I was expecting to enjoy this more than I did. So I ended up giving Gallant 3 out of 5 stars. Next up is Blue Lock Volume 1 by Munayuke Kaneshiro and art by Yuzuke Nomura. After being defeated in the 2018 World Cup, the Football Association gathers 300 of Japan's best youth strikers to compete against one another in hopes that one of them will emerge as the key that Japan needs for victory. So for a while now, I have felt this urge, a calling, if you will, towards the Blue Lock manga. But at the time I started getting that feeling, the Blue Lock anime wasn't too far off, so I decided that I would just wait, watch the anime, and see what happens. And it turns out that I have a lot of mixed feelings about that anime. It has episodes and moments that I think are really amazing, but then it also has a lot that I just don't think is coming across to me the way that it should be. But I did see enough potential in the anime that it made me want to turn to the manga even more than I already did. And looking back at that feeling that I had at the beginning, it must have been some sort of sign because this volume fixed a lot of the issues that I have with the anime. I also did really like when the anime covered these chapters too, so that probably helped. But it was through reading this volume that I finally understood what other people really love and enjoy about this series. Like I said before, I do get glimpses of that in the anime, but that has definitely not always been the case. So I am very, very glad that I read this volume and I'm looking forward to continuing on with the rest of the series and just seeing how it goes. Next up is The City Beautiful by Aiden Polidoros. This is set in 1983 and follows our main character who dreams that he will one day have enough money to bring his mother and his sisters from the oppression that they face in Romania to America. However, his dream begins to fall from his grasp when his best friend becomes the latest victim in a large group of Jewish boys who are being murdered. While the rest of the city is celebrating the World's Fair, our main character is thrown into a nightmare of corruption and deceit and back into the arms of a dangerous boy from his past. These two must find the killer before the killer claims them next. I unfortunately read this during a reading slump, which was not fun. And I do think that this book had some slower moments that made me lose interest in what I was reading. But this book also took a lot of turns and had a lot of different discussions that would immediately draw me back into the story. And I thought that those were super interesting and compelling. It also explores and has discussions surrounding sexuality and religion and anti-Semitism. And the story does contain a lot of darker content that that can definitely be upsetting, so I highly recommend checking out the content warnings for this. It took me a little bit of time with this book, but I did eventually end up growing pretty attached to these characters. I thought that the mystery elements were done well, and I thought that the time period was captured really, really well. Overall, there was a lot that I really liked about this book. I just think that it was a little bit longer than I expected it to be, and that, combined with like the slower moments and my reading slump, really did bring things down here for me. 
but I am really interested in reading more of this author in the future and I gave this one in particular four out of five stars. And the final book that I read in the month of December is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion which is the sequel to Legendborn. Legendborn follows our main character Brie Matthews after the death of her mother. She gets accepted into a residential program at UNC and this seems like it's going to be a good escape from everything that is going on in her life up until she witnesses an attack from a magical creature during her first night on campus. This attack introduces her to a secret society of legendborn who are individuals who hunt down these monsters and then it also introduces her to a mage who is calling himself Merlin. This mage attempts to wipe Bree's memory, however his failure to successfully do so unlocks Bree's own magic and a hidden memory of the night her mother died. Bree then must decide how far she is willing to go for the truth. So not only was this the last book that I finished in December, but it was also the last book that I finished in all of 2022. I feel like I got incredibly lost in this book and it probably helped that I did cram like the last 300 pages or so in the last two days of 2022. So I have spent extended periods of time reading this book. But if there was ever a series for me to do that with, this would definitely be a good choice. I am so invested into the lives of these characters and just their story in general. It has so much complexity and so many layers to everything it does, whether that's the relationships, the magic systems, or the world and setting itself. And there was a lot of focus on all of that within this book, and I feel like we've really got to dive in deep here. And this series is a lot of fantasy, but it also incorporates a lot of real-life history and modern-day elements. Which again, content warnings, because those can definitely get dark and ugly. There's an author's note in the back of this book that does talk about it more, and I highly recommend reading that author's note if you have not already. I say this a lot about this series, but everything is just so well done and so high quality to me. I feel like this book set itself up really well for what will hopefully and probably be an amazing third book. And I do think this book does feel like a little bit like a middle book, but I also really love the pacing of this. And I am really, really, really looking forward to the next book in this series. I need to be with these characters again, and I am so curious to see where everything is going to go. And I ended up giving this book 5 out of 5 stars. Okay, so that is all that I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer the question that'll be around here if you want to do that. And hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye!